Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a trigonometric system. We have sine y equals 5 sine x and 3 cosine x plus cosine y equals 2. So, we're going to start with the second equation. So, in the second equation, I'm going to isolate cosine of y. And the reason for that is I'd like to square both sides, but before I do, I would like to isolate it first. So let me go ahead and write it as the second equation can be written as cosine y equals 2 minus 3 cosine x. And then I'll square both sides. Let's do that. That gives me cosine squared y equals, so that's a minus b quantity squared, 4 minus 12 cosine x plus 3 cosine x quantity squared is going to be 9 cosine squared x. Okay? Now, this expression has two variables, obviously x and y, or cosine x and cosine y. So we do need another equation. So let's go ahead and see how we can simplify this expression. First of all, notice that in the first equation, we only have the sine y and sine x. And in the second one, we only have cosine function. So what we need to do then is to be able to convert these, and we're going to be using the Pythagor Pythagorean identity for that one. So let me go ahead and square the second one as well, as is. So if I square both sides, I get sine squared y equals 25 sine squared x. Now, we're going to take a look at these two equations. Obviously, one of the things you can do is we have cosine squared y on one side and sine squared y, I mean, they're both on the left-hand side, but we have them in different equations. So what we can do, one of the things we can do is we can actually go ahead and add these two equations side by side. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and add these equations up. On the left-hand side, I'm getting cosine squared y plus sine squared y. On the right-hand side, I have 25 sine squared x plus 9 cosine squared x minus 12 cosine x plus 4. Now, the expression on the right-hand side contains two different functions, sine x and cosine x. But notice that sine x is squared, so by using the Pythagorean identity, I can just go ahead and convert sine squared to cosine squared. So we can write, we can replace sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared x. And notice that sine squared y plus cosine squared y is equal to 1. That's the Pythagorean identity. So from here we get 25 times the quantity 1 minus cosine squared x plus 9 cosine squared x minus 12 cosine x plus 4. Now let's go ahead and distribute this expression and leave it on the left hand side. 25 minus 25 cosine squared x plus 9 cosine squared x minus 12 cosine x plus 4 is equal to 1. Now I'd like to combine like terms and it will probably be better if I put everything on the right hand side again. So these, these two will make negative 16 cosine squared x on the left hand side or on the other side it will be 16 cosine squared x. I have negative 12 cosine x on the right hand side it's going to be positive. And then I have 25 plus 4, which is 29. And then if I subtract 1, that will be 28 on the left-hand side, but that will be negative 28 on the right-hand side. You can also think of it as 1 minus 29. Okay? Now, we can divide everything by 4 to make it a little easier. So this becomes 4 cosine squared x plus 3 cosine x minus 7 equals 0. Now, one of, the thing, one of the things that I've been mentioning when we were dealing with polynomials was that if the sum of the coefficients of a polynomial equation is 0, then 1 is a solution. But this is not polynomial, obviously. It's trigonometric, but we can turn it into a polynomial equation by using substitution. So let's go ahead and call cosine x c. And that makes sense, right? You see what I pick c? Okay, hopefully. 4c squared plus 3c minus 7 equals 0. Since c equals 1 is a solution, I can just go ahead and 
factor it or divide by c minus 1, whatever you do, it's going to look like this. I can write it as 4c squared minus 4c and then plus 7c minus 7. You know, we, we've done these manipulations before, kind of, you know, playing with the coefficients to get what we want. Here we get 4c times the quantity c minus 1 plus 7 times c minus 1. This also shows that c equals 1 is going to be a solution. And if you take out c minus 1, you get 4c plus 7. Now from here we get two solutions, either c equals 1 or c equals negative 7 fourths. But remember, c is cosine x and cosine cannot be less than negative 1, nor can it be greater than or equal to, I should say, less than or well, yeah, that's right. It can't be less than negative 1. It can't be greater than 1. So negative 7 fourths is obviously less than negative 1. So this solution is not going to count. We're going to go with c equals 1. Now, what is that supposed to mean? Cosine x equals 1. Now, if you think about the unit circle, there's only one location where cosine is equal to 1, and that is at 0 and multiples of 2 pi, or just multiples of 2 pi. So from here, we get that x is equal to 2 pi n. That just represents, and of course, n is an integer here. Okay, so those are the x values. At the end, we're just going to put it all together. Now, we, we've got to find the y value as well, of course, because this is a system and it has, you know, uh, solutions for x as well as y. So now, how do you find it? Well, first of all, notice that uh, we found that cosine x is equal to 1. So that's something we can substitute into our equations. Let's go ahead and take a look at uh, one of these equations and see which one is going to be a good candidate. Well, since the second equation contains cosine x, why don't we just go ahead and replace cosine x with 1 here, right? And from here, we're going to get the cosine y value. Since cosine x is equal to 1, we get 3 cosine x plus cosine y. Let's write it down. 3 cosine x plus cosine y is equal to 2, right? That's my one of the original equations. And from here, we're going to be solving for cosine y. Well, since cosine x is equal to 1, then I'm just going to replace uh, cosine y with, it's, it's going to equal negative 1. Okay, so if cosine is equal to negative 1, and you're looking at the unit circle again, now we're here, right? Cosine needs to be negative 1. Now, one of the things we have to do is after solving the system, of course, we have to check to make sure that our solutions work because we squared both sides and that could introduce extraneous solutions. Okay, but we'll check that at the end. So cosine y equals negative 1 means that pi is a solution and of course, you can just add multiples of 2 pi to it. So I can write the y as, you know, pi plus 2 pi k where k is an integer. And of course, this can be written in a, you know, more compact form as 2k plus 1 times the quantity pi. We're basically dealing with odd multiples of pi here where k is an integer. Okay? Now, do you think those values are always going to work? We can just go ahead and test the 0 and pi because it's, it's not going to matter if you use other um, values as well. But let's just go ahead and test it out. So we said that x is equal to 0 and y is equal to pi. Is that going to work for both equations? Well, if x is equal to 0, then you're going you're gonna to get sine of 0, which is 0, on the right-hand side here, and we, we're we getting sine of y is equal to 0 as well. And that is true because if y is equal to pi, then sine pi will be 0 on the x-axis, of course. And if you substitute that here, we know that cosine x is equal to 1, and we just got the cosine y value from here without squaring, but actually we just use substitution. So both of our solutions are going to work, which means that they're both valid. So let's go ahead and write it down as a conclusion and see, finish this up, okay? So x is going to be, the x values are going to be written as 2 pi n, and the y values are going to be written as 2k plus 1 times pi. And here we basically have that k is an integer, and of course um, I should be writing one of these as n, right? Uh, well, this was an n, yeah n is equal to, n is an integer, k is an integer, and so this is going to give us all the solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.